What's good? What's good? I didn't realize that tomorrow was Easter until yesterday. Somebody mentioned to me, happy Good Friday. And I was like, damn, it's already April. Shoot. Okay. But that works out well because I'd been wanting to do this video for a while. And so it presented the perfect opportunity, almost as if it was a synchronicity. So I want to talk about two thoughts, kind of, and try to connect them a little bit. The first one being the cleansing of the temple by hippie Jesus. And I say hippie Jesus because there is a growing movement around the idea of Christ consciousness, that Jesus himself was not a God or a son of God, but a philosopher. And his message was that we are all sons and daughters of God because we're all part of the universe. We are all independent but interconnected, such as the way of the universe. So hippie Jesus saw what was going on between the merchants and the bankers and the population, the people. And he saw that extreme interest rates were being charged and that the merchants and bankers were essentially exploiting and taking advantage of the people. So he ran up into the temple and he started throwing tables and yelling and having a fit, but for a good cause. I made a different video, you know, the, ne the necessity of anger. And that was what I was going, like, just one of the things that drives me is the fact that anger is not inherently bad and that there is so much going on in our country that I'm surprised more people are not angry. But then you look at the things I always talk about, the addictions and distractions, and you see why people are not angry. And you see the matrix at work. Because if you look around today, bankers and merchants are exploiting people. Interest rates for low credit buyers are getting higher and higher. Usury is the term. I thought it was illegal, but like nothing's illegal if you're the government because you monopolize the use of force and you become the cronies. So the second bit, I really liked Andrew Yang. I wouldn't vote for him now, but I really appreciate his existence and I hope he continues to push for universal basic income because I still like that idea. However, something he said to me really, really resonated. Not to me, but like on the campaign trail. Two out of three Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. One job cannot support a family anymore. Two jobs can't even support a family anymore. We have allowed the merchants and the bankers to fully turn us into units for their disposal, their usage and disposal. We are no longer humans. We're just robots for them. Human-centered capitalism. I like that. Thank you, Andrew Yang. So I have a question. Do you know who owns the Federal Reserve? One of my good, beautiful, intelligent friends is reading a book called The Color of Money. And so I ask them to tell me if in that book they disclose who owns the Federal Reserve because I am under the impression that it is a privately owned entity. And so individuals own the institution that prints our money. Do you know what our money is 
how it's even valued. When we moved from a gold standard to what's known as the fiat currency, essentially now the dollar is only as strong as the future taxpayer's ability to create wealth for the government to then extract. And so when you think about this, that we now have both parents out of the house working, the supply of labor is at an all-time high. Thus, it's going to drive the cost of wages down. But we have this weird situation where the supply is high and the demand is high. And they're actually this vicious cycle that it's a positive feedback loop. The demand is always growing because the government's need for future tax dollars is always growing. So thus, they're having to always pump the supply of labor to justify their extraction of value. And it's not a sustainable approach. I, I took m multiple economics courses, and one of them being financial institutions and monetary policy. And they don't talk about the Federal Reserve ownership. They don't, like, it, it, you just don't even think Federal Reserve. You just assume that it is a government agency. But it's not. And so we're in this vicious cycle of serving the machine and in the process we have lost our sovereignty our agency we're losing our freedoms and liberties because if we wake up to the game we're going to stop playing and if we stop playing the dollar crashes but that's what we have to do. When I talk about the individual revolution you must undertake, you need to begin to stop playing the game. And you just can't walk away entirely. Like our infrastructure and existence is embedded within it. But you can unplug from different parts of it. And slowly over time, as enough people begin to unplug, it's not going to be able to survive on the little bit of sustenance it's still getting. And that's when we can flip the script. That's when we can take back our power. Land, if you can buy it now, would be so perfect. Two out of three people are living paycheck to paycheck, but that means one out of three have some sort of resources. And so when hippie Jesus talked about lending money to your friends, he said, lend to your friends with no interest. Now I understand that might not be practical in these times, but if the future of our country is collapse, what good is your worthless money going to be if you don't have land, skills, or other tangible resources? So if you have money now and you can invest in your friends who are cultivating land, skills, and resources to be sustainable, that might be a worthwhile investment. I have so many friends that like dream of doing these commune style homesteads where they go in together and buy like 10 20 50 acres and then everybody just gets a little piece but then they share the cost of bringing the infrastructure in so like solar panels and water wells all the things that allow for off-grid sustainability and i really think man if you have some money that's 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 the way of the future if you're gonna live for another 30 50 60 100 years oof it would be smart to get some land. That's my dream, except I am broke as shit. But enough about me, because you got to have faith. The darker the times are, the harder it is to have faith. 
But when you can learn to have faith in those dark times, the light begins to show. I know I talk about depressing things, and I hope I'm wrong, but individually, there is a way out. But it's going to require contributions to your community because what measure of good health or it is not a good me- it is not a measure of good health to be well adjusted in a profoundly sick society your life belongs to you and it doesn't thank you for listening